Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, you might need long sleeves for this beer. Pricker Bush is an 8.2% fruited sour ale from Upper Hand Brewery in Escanaba, Michigan. It's been a little while since I had a beer from Upper Hand. Thankfully, they've been distributing down here in the Lower Peninsula for a little while, so Upper Hand stuff is a little bit easier to get than it was the first time I reviewed it. Now, Pricker Bush here is a wild berry sour. I haven't had a sour from Upper Hand yet, so we're just going to go ahead and dig in. But first, I'd like to thank my executive producers, Brian Kramer, David Jeffries, and Cam Freeman for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help out the channel, and maybe just throw me a couple bucks to buy me a beer, take a look at my Patreon. You can find it down here. It's patreon.drafttherapy.com, where you can get early access to these videos and a few other special perks that are available only to patrons. If the monetary thing isn't your thing, totally get it. Just please share this video, share it with your friends, share it with people that might be interested in getting into craft beer. Let's take a look at the label. Now, these upper hand beer labels look very similar. They're, they all follow this similar kind of motif. They have the coordinates across the top for the brewery, which again is in Escanaba. We start from the top. It says Upper Hand, established in 2014, and it has a picture of the UP and a little star where Escanaba is. This has the title, obviously, of Pricker Bush. It has all these little thorns, all these vines, leaves, little wild berries, little bears in the background. It's a nice little scene. It's primarily pink, a little purple, has the blue on it. And then on the bottom here, it says Oak Aged Native Wildberry Sour. There is no real description, but there is on the side here. It says Brewed and Canned by Upper Hand Brewery in Escanaba, Michigan, a division of Bell's Brewery Incorporated. The shelf life is unlimited. This is 8.2% alcohol by volume. Sour ale with real blueberries, blackberries, elderberries, currants, and chokeberries. And you can, like I said, there's all these different berries represented on the label itself. If you weren't aware, upper hand is a part of uh, Bell's whole scheme, right? Their whole brewery system. So I'm just going to grab, I'm going to grab this Ferndale Project glass. I've been using the smaller one for these smaller cans lately because it's a little bit easier to get it in here. This one was packaged on June 16th, 2022. It says drink UP. It also says it on the label here. Today is July 9th. So we're Definitely in the unlimited range of this beer. Let's crack it. We're going to put a nose on it. Wow, lots of berry. Has a little bit of a, a sour kind of aroma to it. But lots of different berries kicking on in there. Let's go ahead and pour this. Coming out really nice. A really nice kind of ruby red, dark red color to it. We're going to just pour it up there. Let it collect in the glass. The head, I'm sure, we're going to get a max of about a finger. But I think it's probably going to dissipate. Well, actually, it's still hanging on pretty good. It has a nice red color to it. The, the head itself is quite pink. If we hold it up to the light here, super red. That's a really cool looking color. That's a nice looking color. It's a little bit, to you guys, looks a little bit darker purple. To me, it has a little bit more of a reddish, kind of pinkish hue to it. Let's go ahead and put a nose on it. Yeah, again, getting a lot of those berry aromas, getting uh, a little bit of that sour. It says oak aged. I'm not really getting any kind of oak notes to speak of. Let's go ahead and try this out. Cheers. Always talk about the mouthfeel first. Has a quite a crisp mouthfeel, actually, for 8.2%. Is that what I said it was? 8.2%. Yeah, 8.2%. It's pretty crisp. It's got a nice, um, a light feeling to it. It's not... Uh, it's not overly crisp, it's not super like cutting crisp, but it's not really, it's not heavy at all. It's not really in the medium category either. Go ahead and talk about the flavor here. So I am definitely picking up on this berry kind of flavor that's going on. Definitely getting that current, that kind of sharper, a little bit more sour, bitter kind of berry in there. But it's also big blueberry, there's a nice kind of raspberry flavor in there as well. I'm not really sure what choke berries taste like. I don't think I'm too... Uh, what's the other berry they say in here? Um, elderberries. Okay, I know what elderberries taste like, but I can definitely taste a lot more of the blueberry, um, a lot of that kind of blackberry flavor in there. Again, the current really comes through. It's got that... The current adds to this really kind of sour bite that's on the finish. It's not overly sour. It's got a nice kind of sour to it. And then on the aftertaste, on the finish, you really start to pick up that oak barrel. It's not like a 
you know, it's not a bourbon kind of, there's, it's, it's not a bourbon barrel aged thing. It's just oak barrel. And you definitely pick up that kind of oaky note to it, that oaky quality, a little bit of a drier kind of characteristic that comes through with that oaky kind of flavor in there as well. At 8.2%, it doesn't really have a super strong um, alcohol flavor to it. And I'm kind of surprised. It doesn't really taste much like 8.2%. 8 but I think that oak barrel kind of really masks that pretty well because that can kind of be, and maybe it's just because the beers that I've had that are like barrel aged or generally like bourbon barrel aged, you, you get a little bit more of a sharper kind of bourbony characteristic with those types of beers. I think because it's just oak, maybe my mind is kind of trained to think, oh, I taste barrel, therefore it's a higher ABV. But in this case, that's, I, I feel like the oak, the oak barrel kind of character in this beer is what is kind of masking that 8.2%. It's not overly sweet, but it's not overly sour either. I think, again, you know, I talk a lot about people that, I know a lot of people that don't drink beer. And when you have them try a beer, uh, you might taste all these things that kind of, you know, we'll pick out these flavors, these sweetnesses or these bitternesses or whatever. And it doesn't taste overly overwhelming to us because we're used to tasting that. But a non-beer drinker drinking this would probably say this is pretty sour. But with all the different sours that I've had um, in the past, you know, several years, it doesn't taste too bitter, but it's not, it's not sweet. I mean, it has a little bit of a sweetness up front. It has that kind of equal balance of bitter um, from, you know, the oak to some of the berries that were used to the currant. The currant, like I said, is, is the big kind of flavor that I taste on the back end and that oak. So this is a really nice kind of beer that it has that sour. It's not a fruited sour in the respect that it's like just a, you know, fruit juice that they call beer, like most fruited sours are these days. And it's not sour like a wild sour. It doesn't really capture that kind of flavor to me, but it is a nice melding of those two things. You get that sweet, you get that bitter, and you get that nice oakiness that ties it all together, but it's not bourbon barrel aged. It's not, you know, some kind of uh, spirit barrel aged. So it kind of carries all that flavor on its own. And that's a, that's a nice thing, a nice change of pace because a lot of beers these days rely on those spirit barrels to really influence the flavor. This one doesn't, it feels like it stands on its own and represents all those fruits really well. All right, friends, that has been Pricker Bush from Upper Hand Brewery in Escanaba, Michigan. Do you, have you had this beer before? Do you have a favorite beer from Upper Hand? Maybe a favorite sour? Let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might wanna subscribe and click that bell. I'm here talking about beer twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite, or you might, you know, not avoid a clunker because you weren't subscribed and getting those notifications. There's so many beers on the aisles these days. It's easier to go in with somebody telling you the good stuff from the bad stuff. So tune in next time for that kind of thing. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries. These guys are in Escanaba, Michigan, as I've mentioned several times now. And most importantly, until next time, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Cheers.